A warm welcome once again. Let's just bring you up to speed now on developments out of Ukraine. One advisor with the Ukrainian Defense Ministry says the weapons needed from the West are not arriving quickly enough. But Ukraine is grateful for the ones received so far. Yuri Sak was speaking to the BBC earlier today and said that even in Severodonetsk in the eastern Donbass region, where fighting is now set to be the fiercest, the Ukrainian army continues to protect the city with what it can. But it would have been much more efficient at repelling the enemy and liberating Ukrainian land had they received more weapons and more heavy weapons by now. Meanwhile, another Ukrainian government official says destruction of the city of Mariupol was made possible because of traitors that passed on coordinates of the Russian forces early in the invasion. Mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Boychenko, said the Russian forces knew where to shell and knew critical infrastructures such as the 15 power supplies in the city, which even the mayor himself did not know, as well as their locations. He accuses the so-called traitors of being city council deputies from the pro-Russian opposition platform for Life Party, which now rule the city under the Russian occupation. Finnish presence, Soli Ninisto, says Russia and Ukraine are both using heavy, heavier weapons against one another, but that Russia's of course, are more powerful. Speaking during security policy talks in Finland, Mr. Nisso says Finland and other Western countries have been careful to only supply Ukraine with weapons that Russia would also use, making sure that the West cannot be accused of escalating the situation, according to comments from coming from a local broadcaster. He also says the Russian weapons are stronger and include thermobaric bombs, which he describes as weapons of mass destruction. And now we're all caught up. Russia's defense ministry says its missiles have destroyed a large quantity of weapons and military equipment in the eastern Donbass region, including some that have been sent by the United States and European nations. Russian forces have also shot down three Ukrainian Su-25 fighter jets, two of which near Donetsk and one in Kharkiv in eastern Ukraine. In addition to Tochka U ballistic missiles and three Uragan multiple launch rockets have been intercepted in Kherson and near Lugansk, respectively. According to a spokesperson in the Ministry of Defense, the attacks have resulted in the destruction of five armored vehicles, six field artillery mounts and mortars, 15 special vehicles, and fixed ammunition and fuel depots. At least three people, including a child, have been killed and four injured today by what local separatist media says is a Ukrainian artillery strike on a market in the Russian-backed separatist Ukrainian region of Donetsk, burning stalls at the central Maisky market, and at least one body could be seen on the ground at the market in Donetsk. A local news is saying 155 millimeter caliber NATO standard artillery munitions hit parts of the region today. But Ukrainian officials say an attack on a nearby residential block in Donetsk was carried out by the Russian military. President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly said the main immediate reason for what he casts as a special military operation in Ukraine is to protect the Russian speakers of the Donbass region from persecution and attack by Ukraine. But he says Russia's claim of persecution of the same Russian speakers is a baseless pretext for sending troops into the country. I'll show you a video in a moment released by the Ukrainian police today showing damage caused to residential buildings in the city of Bakhmut and other areas in the Donetsk region following Russian selling. There it is. A resident in the region said the building he was in was shaking during the Russian shelling and footage showed shattered windows and scattered debris. A crater left by one shell in a road in Bakhmut was depicted in the images posted by the National Police of Ukraine. An unnamed officer said the police were documenting the consequences of the enemy's aggression. Local media say at least three people, including a child, were killed, four injured earlier today by Ukrainian artillery at the markets in the region of Donetsk. We mentioned that earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> 
The NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has hailed Sweden for taking important steps to meet Turkey's demands for approving Stockholm's NATO membership application. Sweden and Finland applied to join the alliance last month. The response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, their applications have faced unexpected opposition from none other than Turkey, which has been angered by what it deems to be Sweden's support for Kurdish militants and a previous decision to withdraw arms export licenses to Turkey. Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson says her country has changed its terrorism laws and in the process and is in the process of further tightening. As you know, Turkey has raised concern in uh, relations to Sweden's and Finland's applications, and we are taking them very seriously and have engaged in a dialogue together with Finland in order to find a way forward with Turkey. I welcome that Sweden has already started to change its counter-terrorism legislation and that Sweden will ensure that the legal framework for arms export will reflect their future status as a NATO member with new commitments to allies. These are two important steps to address uh, concerns Turkey has raised. Uh, the aim is to solve those issues as soon as possible, uh, to be able to welcome Finland and Sweden as uh, full members as soon as possible. And therefore, we are working hard and actively on these issues in close consultation with Stockholm, with, uh, with uh, Helsinki and, of course, our NATO allied uh, uh, Turkey. Uh, uh, and, and in that context, those signals from uh, Sweden are important on terrorism and arms exports. Uh, we have a much stricter uh, regulation when it comes to uh, financing of terrorism. And we have, will also, the 1st of July, have uh, even, even stronger legislation when it comes to the fight against terrorism. Uh, so here, there are no questions about how strong how strongly Sweden sees on, on terrorism and that we are uh, willing to uh, to contribute to the fight fight against terrorism if Sweden was attacked then I deem it as unthinkable that NATO allies would not react and that is a message that we have conveyed the NATO allies have conveyed in a very clear way uh, to any potential adversary. So seen from a security perspective, Sweden is in a better place now than before they applied. Then of course the aim is to of course take the next step, full membership as soon as possible, but then we need to address uh, the concerns expressed by, uh, by uh, t Turkey. The viewer is Anna Chenikova joins us now. She's in Kyiv. Anna, do describe for us as much as you know and as much as you can the battle going on in Severodonetsk. Good evening. Uh, well, the uh, situation in Severodonetsk remains very tough, remains very difficult. Um, during the weekend, um, so we don't really get, you know, uh, an update information every hour because it just you know situation just changing too quickly but over the weekend we got understanding that apparently ukrainian forces were a little bit closer to the city center and today the main news is that russian forces managed to push to push them back to from the city center so basically ukrainian forces remain in the industrial area this is what we know for the moment we also know that uh, the fighting uh, are happening on, in the streets, and the Ukrainian forces are quite successful in the street fights. However, um, uh, this war uh, is very much, uh, and well, most of it part is artillery war, and of course, Russian forces have uh, more equipment, uh, let's say much more equipment than the Ukrainian forces at the moment. This is at least what we hear from there and what we, what we know so far, uh, but still, Apparently, Ukrainian forces have enough, uh, I mean, you know, dif difficult to say, but tough enough to, you know, remain at certain point. But we see that it's really, really difficult. And this is basically the main uh, also point of President Zelensky when he is asking for more equipment uh, faster or at least when he is asking partners not to slow down because we all understand that Ukrainian forces would need more very soon. Uh, but um, Severodonetsk battle, uh, well, you know, it's a battle for every building. So it's not even about street by street. It's about building by building. And sometimes the fight for one building could last for a couple of days. 
so uh, it, it's you know all the all the Russian forces, I mean most of the Russian forces and probably the best of the best possible are uh, located there at the moment. Similarly to Ukrainian forces, because uh, all servicemen who are now there in Severodonetsk and in Donbas region in general are the most experienced, are the most trained, because these people are in such kind of battle since 2014. Yeah, and I just wanted to uh, uh, point out, when you say the Russian forces have more equipment, uh, that's, um, well, just a little bit of what uh, the Finnish president um, mentioned earlier, that uh, both sides do have weapons, but the Russians seem to have more, and uh, they seem to be more uh, advanced than the Ukrainians. About those weapons, though, that President Zelensky is requesting, um, he, he wants something more in the region of the Iron Dome in Israel, but n no Ukrainian authorities, uh, do Ukrainian authorities think that more weapons really is the answer? Because Russian forces are targeting, you know, where the weapons have been stored uh, the depots um, earlier. The Russian government said it had destroyed some of those weapons that had been donated by the West. Uh, there is no confirmation about any weapons uh, that uh, were, uh, you know, provided by the West destroyed, because to be honest, I don't really think that these weapons are stored. Uh, as far as we know, these weapons go directly to the front line, because it's, you know, it's no time to store these weapons. These weapons need, are needed now already, even yesterday. So um, it looks like, of course, Russian, for, Russian uh, you know, government would try to create this nice picture and, you know, encouraging picture for their people probably to, you know, to show that, well, look, West is helping out, but uh, we're destroying their help. But uh, if we look from this, from, you know, from the Ukrainian point of view and from here, from the inside, you know, I think that uh, if such kind of weapon is destroyed, um, everyone would, would know this already here. And as I already said, it, it, it's really, it, it doesn't really look like the, this weapon is really stored for, for too long because uh, most most of the equipment is going directly to the front line, and we have not only one front line. There are, you know, uh, south, uh, east, and north because north is still also under the Ukraine uh, under the Russian attack. The north of Ukraine, even uh, these uh, territories have been uh, re liberated uh, quite, uh, you know, months ago. So um, I cannot confirm anything about distra uh, that any of the West equipment been destroyed, but we know that a lot of West equipment is really um, already at the battlefield and they are working. But uh, of, but of course, Ukrainians uh, well need more, uh, and uh, we all also we all understand that there are you know two parallel pa parallel ways Ukraine uh, Ukraine is uh, receiving this weapon. So we have land lease. Land lease is taking, uh, well, it just started to work, and uh, we know that some equipment is already, um, uh, Ukrainians are already training with this equipment, so this is working, but we should not forget that in parallel, there are also not, there is also another help from, uh, from international partners from diff different uh, countries, uh, and this help was uh, uh, in, you know, uh, was already in, in action from day one of this work. So we should uh, very much consider these two parallel paths of, of help. But of course, land lease, uh, well, it, it includes much more, you know, of heavy weapons, and this is extremely important. And uh, if we talk about the Israeli system, well, um, I, the red talks that, and uh, we all heard that um, Ukrainian president uh, kind of said that it would be really nice to get it. Uh, we don't know yet if if there are any talks, particular talks about you know the uh, well, about getting the system because uh, I think that this would you know this would get to the public uh, eye uh, only when it would be confirmed. So for the moment there are no talks about uh, that. I mean that it's you know really coming, but of course. Uh, this kind of system, so defensive systems, especially from artillery and uh, rockets, missiles, uh, this is very important for Ukraine and uh, also long range is important, you know, uh, to change the situation. But we all understand that uh, probably, you know, Western help would not exceed 
so w w would make sure that it doesn't exceed uh, that Ukrainian army doesn't exceed the uh, the amount of equipment than you know Russian mm -hmm. side has. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is important to the Russian government. Uh, there have been complaints before uh, Ukraine's uh, weapons and, and the amount of weapons coming into Ukraine are being unfair in this war, according to the Russian government. I mentioned earlier the mayor of Mariupol blaming some officials for snitching on the government to Russian forces, uh, which is how. Well, he says that's how the city uh, is under Russian control at the moment. What do you know uh, about this? Uh, well, unfortunately, there are a lot of cases like this, not only in uh, uh, Mariupol, but also in Kherson. We, we know about these cases also in Kharkiv region, in Donetsk region. So there are people from uh, from certain party mostly. So uh, there is a party which is now banned in Ukraine because this party, uh, so it was proven by the court that this, this members of this party, a lot of them were kind of, you know, working for Russian side. Uh, but unfortunately, yes, this is what happened from the very beginning, and a lot of things could have been, uh, you know, avoided uh, if these people would not uh, help Russian forces to, you know, to, to proceed with their actions and with the attacks. We know that there are a lot of questions uh, about Kherson and Kherson region, and uh, also Mariupol and uh, um, I mean, uh, in, unfortunately, we hear about this uh, in almost every region that there are, you know, people who are trying to, uh, you know, help uh, the enemy. Uh, so uh, this, unfortunately, is happening, and intelligence, Ukrainian intelligence, is working hard on that. We know that today one person was also arrested by the Ukrainian um, uh, Ukrainian special forces. Uh, also accused of uh, helping the Russians. Anna, thank you so much, uh, you know, for your reporting all this time and even today. Uh, thank you for joining us and do stay safe. Thank you.